did you come ready to praise God? If you could stand to your feet, let's praise Him together. Clap your hands. Keep praising now to our God who has the whole world in His hands, who holds it all together.
Australians going about their lives on a Saturday afternoon shopping. In the midst of that, his faithfulness remains. We cling to that as the seasons change, as events around the world happen and things like that happen, his faithfulness remains. We'll just uh, take a moment now, before we start, just pray for, for that uh, situation. Just join me in prayer. Father, we do pray for the families of those who, who have been injured, Lord, for those in hospital. Pray for their recovery, Lord God, for their families of those who have so tragically been killed, Lord God. We pray that you'll be their comfort and their strength. That there'll be people around them to show them your love and your care. To make sense out of the senseless, Lord God. To give meaning and purpose to what's happened, Father. We don't understand, we can't, we can't make sense of it, Lord God. But we 
know that you are faithful despite all that. We thank you for the courageous policewoman, Lord, who brought this to an end and pray you'll be with her. That you'll have people around her supporting her through what's going to be a long and and traumatic process of just inquiries and and inquests and uh, all the paperwork that goes along with that, Father. We thank you for her courage and bravery. For the courage and bravery of others, ordinary people around who try to confront the person involved, Lord God shopkeepers looking after the people in their shops Father their lives will be changed Father we we just pray you'll be with them close at hand caring for them and loving them and protecting them through this Lord God because we know as we stand here this morning your faithfulness remains you are a good and mighty God and we thank you in the name of your precious son Jesus So why don't you take your seats if you're joining us online this morning it's great to have you here we, we love being able to share with you in, in this way you now we are a praying church we are a giving church um, you know, we take things to the Lord in prayer it's an important thing to do uh, we've got a slide up on the screen we've got a QR code there and around the auditorium at the back and in the cafe the QR code you can just uh, send us your prayer requests about what's going on in the world, about what's something closer to hand, things that are happening in your life. God knows, God cares. He wants to, to be part of that. We want to be part of that as a church family. You can give through the, the QR code. You know, just sow into what God's doing through our, our congregation and our, our, our meetings. It's great. We want to help you. If you're new, we want to connect with you there. If you want to take your next steps, we want to connect with you there. Just make sure we you become part of who we are and, and part of what we're doing. And there are lots of great things we're doing here in our church. So let's just go to the screens for a moment and, and see how we can see what's going on. Welcome to Sunday Announcements with Beck and Richard. G'day Beck, how are you? Good, thank you Richard. National Brown Day today. Uh, apparently, yep. <laughs> Now, Richard, what do you do here at Life UC? Well, at Life UC, I look after pastoral care. I also champion the men's team at Circuit Breaker and Valiant Man courses. Matter of fact, Beck, Circuit Breaker is just coming up. If your communication skills are producing problems in your relationships, this is a course for you. It will give you tools to be able to combat situations so you can have a peaceful outcome. That sounds incredible. It is. It's a marvellous course, Beck. We also have Alpha Crisis Term 2 enrolments coming up, so jump on that if you are keen. The topic for this term is applying the Bible. Now, it's a practical course that will enhance your faith. It will help you interpret the Bible, respond to the interpretation, and discuss with others to help guide you through the process of examining Scripture. So a real practical one if you're interested. Enroll by the 19th of April, and Alpha Crisis starts on Wednesday the 1st of May. There are a few other courses happening in Term 2. Richard, what are those? There's a prayer course, a healthy habit course, and one of my all-time favourites, FREEDOM! That's right. Also, at the moment, Team Feb are in the middle of the Beyond Bitumen Rally, where they fundraise for Beyond Blue and raise awareness about mental health. If you haven't had the opportunity and you'd like to donate, you can check out this QR code here and donate to them and the amazing work that they do. So head to our website to check out anything else. We also have email that goes out every week so you can subscribe to our church news email on our website also. Have a great day, church. Bye. Bless you. (laughs) Now what commitment from Beck getting her fingernail polished and matched the colour of the ice cream. Wasn't that cool? It's uh, Missions uh, Sunday as well, and we've got a great missions update. Um, Sarah's going to come and, and share with us for a little while. The wonderful Sarah. Thank you, Mark. Yes, it is time for another Life Missions update. And this morning we're going to be hearing from two of our uh, field workers. First up, we have Robert and Rhonda who have been serving faithfully in South Asia for I think more than 25 years at this point, And they have a great update for us um, about a couple of things that are happening with them and also with the Flourish program that they've been running. So we will watch that video together now. Thank you. Hello to our friends at Life Unlimited. 
We're so happy to be able to share this short video with you. And we have our special little guest here, Layla, our granddaughter visiting from Wollongong with our daughter and son-in-law. And we're really excited because Leighton and Grace and the children have moved to Malang now, which is so we're, we all live in the same city, which is really exciting. And um, we're just happy to share with you some updates of what's been happening here in the last few months. So just in this last uh, couple of weeks, we've had our annual conference, and uh, which is a summit for partners. And we usually would have about 60 come. We've had it each year for the last 15 years, every March. And but this year, there's been a, there was 105 who came. Yeah, so we're really excited. This um, last 12 months, we've um, run Flourish in six locations. Three which are new, which is Penang, Komodo Island and Lombok. Um, and we have a fabulous team of um, national ladies who've been instrumental in running that. So we're really excited for that. And there was this great little uh, video of one of the Flourish programs that was run recently with our team Yay. in Sulawesi. And so we'll have a quick look at that now. Kami dari Proris Gorontalo, kesan kami yaitu membangun wanita yang semakin mandiri, semakin percaya diri, dan semakin kuat dalam menggarap segala cobaan. Kesannya agar semua wanita bisa menjadi wanita hebat dan bisa menginspirasi semua orang. Saya berharga dan satu-satunya di dunia. Saya ciptaan yang unik dan berharga. Saya punya kekuatan. Kami wanita berharga, punya kekuatan, dan punya tujuan. Yeah, so with that Flourish uh, program that you've just seen and what is happening throughout the country, that is what you've been partnering with over these years. And so we just want to say thank you very much okay. and for your support for ourselves. So thank you and God bless. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. It's so good. Yeah, we could give that a clap. I think I love the statements that those women were making, that they are beautiful, that they are unique, that they have a purpose. I think that's such an important thing that um, Robert and Rhonda have been a part of introducing that program to the country. And the program Flourish was actually written and developed um, by two of our other field workers, so um, Deb Hilton and Beck Windsor in Vietnam. They actually started that program. And we are now going to hear an update from Kelvin and Beck about their ongoing work in Da Nang and throughout Vietnam. Thank you. Hi Life UC, Kelvin and Beck Windsor here in Da Nang, Vietnam. We just want to say a huge hi, hello and thank you to you guys for your love and support for us and our family mm -hmm. and all the work here in Vietnam. Yes, we are incredibly grateful for you and we, along with the world's best team, sorry guys, uh, have been quite uh, busy. It's already been quite a full year. April has really only begun. But other than celebrating New Year twice, we've already welcomed a few teams. We've been in and out of different communities uh, with workshops, uh, early detection clinics, heart surgeries, mm. school improvements, income generation. And we've been followed around by a uh, film crew from national television doing a 45-minute yeah. slot on... Movie stars. Us. For some reason, they want to do a slot on us, which is just 
Yep, weird. Anyway, so we'll be flying up north shortly to their studio to do the official recording, mm -hmm. but that's been a great opportunity as well. Yeah, we've been doing stuff out in the community, uh, looking at um, cows and goats that we've recently mm. provided and how they're impacting mm. families here in rural Danang and being able to just chat with them face to face. We saw a mum um, or a grandmum and she's currently yeah. looking after her grandchildren after her husband left her many, many years ago mm. and raising this next generation. And the supply of a cow has just put tears in her eyes. It's just really helped her to be able to just transform and provide for her family. Yeah, like she's already been quite a resilient woman, mm. raising one generation on her own and now a second as well. And just that generational impact of, you know, circumstances and how they can compound one after the other. Mm. But with this particular cow, for example, and we spent some time with this cow, moving around and just in her lounge room, just chatting about what she's hoping and planning and dreaming for the future mm. for her daughter, for her grandson, uh, and just the difference it's already made, but what, you know, she's planning, you know, the cow is already pregnant, what that foal, like that calf, <laughs> foal, different animal, uh, is going to mean for their family. And she's got, she's yeah. got big plans and it's just beautiful just to be able to chat with her, mm -hmm. uh, as she dreamt, you mm -hmm. know, really starting to think of not just survival mode, but what does this mean for my yeah. future? And we've just moved offices here in Da Nang as well. We appreciate your prayers, time to come for a visit, check it out, mm -hmm. our, new, our new digs mm -hmm. um, and see what's happening here. And we appreciate the prayer as well with the continued um, relationship mm -hmm. and paperwork that we have with the government. We have a team member um, who's been in and out of hospital for um, some surgery and stuff, which can really use some prayer and support. Yeah, absolutely. So keep praying for us and we're going to keep praying for you. And one of our prayers is that you would just continue to be a church that blesses each other and continues to bless the nation. You are influential beyond uh, your size, beyond who you think you are individually as well as a church. But we know, and we can testify on behalf of many other field workers, the influence and the impact that you guys and girls are having. And so we just want to say thank you. Have an awesome weekend. Be blessed. Love you. Bye. <laughs> always so great to hear from them and um, the team that went to Vietnam last year we were really fortunate in that we got to go out into the community and see as well firsthand the impact that those gifts of livestock have um, in individual families and throughout the community it's really an amazing thing it's just it seems a small thing for us they get a cow or they get a goat but for them it really is life-changing and not just for that family but generationally as they were speaking about and throughout the community. Now church, we are going to do what something else that we can in addition to our giving and to support our field workers and that is to pray for them. We had um, on our Friday night prayer meeting, um, we talked about how even though we are here, we can still have an impact there. And um, Tamai shared a verse from Exodus, as long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. Our prayers can help our field workers keep raising their hands and keep sewing in and keep impacting the lives um, of the communities that they're working in. Um, so for Robert and Rhonda, we are gonna pray for safety and security for them and for their team. We are gonna pray for continued opportunities for connection and expansion of their ministry. And we are gonna pray for the Flourish program that we could see is already spreading throughout that nation and having a great impact. For Kelvin and Beck, as they mentioned in the video, we're gonna pray um, for their ongoing relationship with the government and all of the paperwork and bureaucracy that that involves. We're gonna pray for their team member who is in the hospital. And we're gonna keep praying for increased opportunities in favor. I think that um, that news report that there is being done about them could be a really big thing and we wanna pray into that as well. So will you join with me now, church, as we pray? Father, we thank you so much um, for our field workers, for each one around the world. And we just wanna, especially this week, lift up Robert and Rhonda to you, Lord. We pray that you would bless them. We thank you for the time that they've had with family recently. And we just pray that you would continue um, to bless them, to equip them 
for every door that you are going to open for them. We pray for their safety, for the safety of their team that is spread around the country. We pray that you would continue to provide opportunities for connection and expansion of their ministry. And we thank you for the Flourish program, Lord, that is speaking life into women. And we just pray that that would continue to grow, that the women that need to be a part of that program would find out about it and would be able to come along. And we pray for Kelvin and Beck, Lord. We thank you for their new offices. We thank you that you provided a place for them. And we thank you for the opportunity that they have um, with this this government news report that's following them around. We just pray um, for opportunities to speak to the um, the reporters and the, and the technicians and all of that. But beyond that, that their message would continue to spread around the country, a message of hope and of um, of deliverance from from poverty. And we just. Um, We thank you for them. We pray for their team member, for their health, for their restoration. And we pray that you would continue to provide all that they need, Lord, to continue their work there in Da Nang and throughout Vietnam. We thank you, Lord. Um, Pray that you would put it on our hearts to keep praying throughout this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, church. Thanks, Sarah. Well, we're about to be blessed by uh, Pastor Linda with a word in a minute. But before we get to that, it's time to stand up, have a minute to mingle, shake your sillies out, turn around, say hi to someone in the auditorium. If you're joining us online, why don't you text a friend and and let them know you're thinking about them or invite them to come and watch uh, watch what you're doing and uh, in watching our service online this morning. Well, good morning. Do you all feel thoroughly welcomed? I hope no one goes home and feels that nobody ever talked to them. And and that's why we do it. I know some people don't like Minute to Mingle, but we like you to feel that people care and they love you and they want to value enough to spend time talking to you. So it's great to be with you this morning. Just a quick update, as some of you will know, uh, and also, sorry, to welcome our online uh, congregation too, our church family. And there's one special person also watching this morning, which is Pastor Sean. Uh, We just want to thank the people and teams that knew during the week and have been praying. Uh, On Tuesday night, he was on a very late flight back. And uh, I've done this a million times, gone to go onto the escalator and got the wrong, wrong step and tripped. Although I'm always going up an escalator doing that. Well, he did it at the top of an escalator at the Canberra airport and fell all the way to the bottom. And I know. And uh, good thing is not one bone was broken at all. And that. And so he's uh, he's quite bruised and he's got all those sear marks in on his chest and uh, his face was a real mess on Wednesday morning. And uh, but he's healing up really well and uh, apart from that he's he's good. He's just sore on his head and nose and everything and and uh, you wouldn't want to really see him on camera today. So he's at home watching. So we're thinking of you Sean and I hope you take my message in to heart. (laughs) So, 
We've been doing, started a new series last week called Made for Mondays. And uh, if you, Pastor Sean started it, and if you missed it, we really encourage you to see it because it helps in the flow of where we're going. And uh, if you missed it, you can go to our YouTube, Life You See, not Life Unlimited Church, Life You See, and go to the tab that says Live, because I'm always looking for the videos, and where are they? And you've got to go to the Live tab, and you'll find it. So we looked at how God sees, that doesn't see work that we do on Mondays as something that's to be dreaded or endured, which might be something you do. And you think, oh, I've got to go to work on Monday. Here we go. And that, but it should be received from God as a gift and a blessing. You know, after God created the earth in his works and mankind, we see in Genesis 1, verse 31, he said, God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And so, if God thinks working is good, then it's good that he's flowing in us and he's got works he wants to do through us. And with everything God created, there was a purpose and an, out, and an, and an outworking of that purpose to be fruitful and fulfilled. In Ephesians 2 verse 10, it says, For we are God's workmanship. You are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, it says, Throw yourselves into the work of the master, confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. So when we see our workers as an opportunity to fulfill God's plan for us, then there's endless opportunities for God to outpour his heart and his gifts to us, like his wisdom, his creativity, his mercy and grace, his forgiveness, his peace, his joy, his enthusiasm, his discernment and situations. That's just to name a few. We can be a tremendous difference in the workplace that we are not just based on the work that we feel we've got to do, but saying, God, I'm here, work through me. I am ready and available. And you'd be amazed at what can God can do through you. And we just aren't made for Sundays, all coming into a wonderful time in God's presence, wonderful morning tea afterwards if you don't rush home. And that we're not just made for Sundays, we're made for Mondays and all the other days of the week and all the privileges and opportunities that God affords us as we do that and we're open to him. We do need to realise though that we partner with God. We're not doing this alone. We partner with God in all we do and he chooses to work through us and be in us. That's what he chooses to do. So when it comes to Mondays, God doesn't need a big red carpet, a big fanfare, a wide open door for him to have an opportunity to do something special in your work environment. He only needs a slim window of opportunity through you working with him, through you working with him, and he gets it right the first time. So there's two questions I'd like to ask you this morning. Do you recognise a slim window of opportunity when it presents itself? And the second thing is, are you prepared to allow God to move through you, even when you least expect it, regardless of the odds? Do you recognise a slim wind of opportunity when it presents itself? And are you prepared to allow God to move through you, even when you least expect it, against all the odds? And many of us would know by now that anything of significance with God and what he wants to do through us is going to be always fraught with obstacles, challenges, distractions, and doubt. But God isn't shaken by any of that. So why not give God a go? You are made for Mondays. And that's the title of my sermon today, Give God a Go. First point is, God can do the unexpected on Mondays. Let's look at David and Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, verses 4 to 7. Then Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was a giant of a man, measuring over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet, a 200-pound coat of mail, bronze leggings, and carried a bronze javelin seven inches thick, tipped with 25-pound iron spearhead. And on top of that, he's got an armour bearer walked ahead of him with a huge shield. We never think too much about, I don't, that armour bearer ahead of him, but he was there. 
Meanwhile, in another part of the country, 1 Samuel 17, 17 to 18, one day Jesse said to his son, David, take this bushel of roasted grain and these 10 loaves of bread to your brothers. Give these cheese, this cheese to their captain and see how the boys are getting along and bring us back a letter from them. So David arrives and he sees how scared the, is, uh, the Israeli, Israeli army are of Goliath and how Goliath taunts them and defies them. And he's not impressed and he thinks, I can take this sucker out. And he knows that God will help him. How dare the enemy have the last word? That's what his thinking is. And so we skip ahead to 1 Samuel 17, 40 to 42. Then he picked up five smooth stones from a stream. This is David. Put them in his shepherd's bag. Most of you will know all this. And armed with only a shepherd's staff and sling, started across to Goliath. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this nice little red-cheeked boy. And then we see in verses 48 to 50, as Goliath approached, David ran out to meet him and reaching into his shepherd's bag, took out a stone, hurled it from his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in and the man fell to his face to the ground. So David conquered the Philistine giant with a sling and a stone and might I add, and God. I find it interesting that that stone went straight over the armor bearer didn't hit his shield, straight into Goliath. So there's a couple of things to note here. Did you notice when I was speaking how much armour Goliath was wearing? You think his size and all he was going on about would have been intimidating enough. But the reality was, if he thought he was so invincible, why is he wearing all this armour? If he's such a big giant, I can kill anyone. He won't need an armour bearer and he won't need all the stuff. So why is he wearing all this armour? Because he was all talk and he was doing the psychological warfare on the enemy, which he saw as David. But the reality was he was vulnerable and he needed to wear armour. You know, in our lives, the enemy talks up big, but he is still extremely vulnerable. Why? Because any time we dare to use the authority and the power that God has given us as his people, he is going to lose every time. His only advantage in psychological warfare on those who are those who don't really believe the word of God and take God at his word or those who are ignorant of God's power in their lives because they didn't spend enough time in his word and getting to know him. That's the only reason he can get it over us is if we don't believe God's word, we don't believe God is who he says he is and we haven't spent time with him and we don't know him, that's how he can get us. Otherwise, he's lost it. First John 4, 4 says, For he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. We need to get that into our system. Another thing we see from David's original purpose from the trip wasn't to slay a giant. It was to bring bread and cheese to his brothers and the captain of the army and, and tell his father how things were going. The last thing on his mind was he was going to slay a giant that day. He was just bringing cheese and crackers, his charcuterie board to the boys. That's all he was planning to do. And so when this happens, he's got a slim window of opportunity to give God a go. Or fuss around trying to work out, oh, God, is this you? I'm not quite sure. Oh, and totally missing the whole opportunity. And the important thing is that we need to do that. Also. We need to make sure whether, when this sort of slim window of opportunity happens in our lives, we're not fussing around trying to work out, is that you, God? Is it not? Oh, 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 oh. We need to know our God so well that we don't dither around trying to work out if it's God or not. And we're so attuned to his spirit that we know, we know he will just come through for us. And that all boils down to relationship. And where is your relationship standing with God at this present moment? God didn't need five stones. All he needed was one and someone to work through, smack on. It doesn't matter to him how much or how little space he has to work with. All he needs is a slim window of opportunity and our desire to work with him, to make his plan succeed, which they will, every time. Give God a go. You are made for Mondays. The second thing is, 
God has all the details covered on Mondays. Let's read from Numbers. A lot of you will think, I know where she's going to go with this. Well, no, you don't. <laughs> Numbers 13, 1, 3, 25 to 33. The Lord now said to Moses, send men to explore the land of Canaan, the land I am giving to Israel. Send out 12 men, all tribal leaders of Israel, from their camp in the wilderness of Paran. And after exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses, Aaron, and the people of Israel at Kadesh in the wilderness of Paran. They reported to the whole community that they had see, what they had seen and showed them the fruit that they had taken from the land. This was their report to Moses. We arrived in the land you sent us to see, and it is indeed a magnificent country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is some of its fruit as proof. And that's where they should have stopped. But the people living there are powerful and their cities and towns are fortified and very large. We also saw the descendants of Anak who are living there. That's giants. The Amalekites live in the Negev and the Hittites, Jebusites and the Amorites live in the hill country. The Canaanites live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan Valley. But Caleb tried to encourage the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to take the land. We can certainly conquer it. Now, he knew his God. But the other men who explored the land with him answered, We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread discouraging reports about the land among the Israelites. The land we explored will swallow up anyone who goes to go who goes to live there all the people we saw were very large we even saw giants there the descendants of Anak we felt like grasshoppers next to them and that's what we looked like to them so many of you may have heard this question before but for those of you who are new and maybe new online today I will still ask it since they hadn't personally talked to the giants who told them they were like grasshoppers. Where did they get that from? Where on earth did they get it from? The reality is they made it up themselves. And imagination crept into their spirits and they let it take hold. They allowed themselves to be more intimidated by the obstacles than being amazed by the good things that they saw their mighty God who was partnering with them. They needed to give God a go. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 to 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And I've shared before in my life, there's been so many times when these thoughts that are just awful and not real come into my mind and they're scary. And I've learned to say aloud because Sean brought me to this scripture, imagination, I cast you down in the name of Jesus Christ and I bring you into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And then I deliberately think about something else that's good. Might be my grandchildren, the beach, whatever. So I don't allow it any more thought power in my life. And it really, really works. Sometimes we have just got to get our act together and get the power of God operating and his word and use the authority that God has given us and not put up with this stupid stuff that runs around in our heads and defeats us from doing great things for God. A few things to note about what happened here in this passage of scripture. First and foremost tells us that God had given a directive, spy out the land that he was giving them. This wasn't whoa, what he hoped to give them. If he could work out what to do with the big bad giants, what am I gonna do? Ugh, I don't think so. He had it all worked out. All they had to do, all they had to do was obey. Since when is God not faithful to his word? When is he not faithful to his word? Psalm 89 verse 1, with my mouth will I make known your faithfulness to all generations. Psalm 119 verse 90, your faithfulness endures to all generations. That's not maybe, it's a given. Get into your word. This was a no-brainer, just do it. Secondly, these men spying out the promised land weren't raw recruits trying to figure out things. It tells us in verse 3 they were tribal leaders. 
Two of them were raring to go, but the other 10 were more interested in bringing others into their circle of fear than allowing faith to arise. What do you do? Do you bring people into your circle of fear or do you inspire them with the faith that you have in God? So Winston Churchill says, the pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity, but the optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. Thirdly, so they thought they were grasshoppers. Since when can't God use grasshoppers? In past times, he's worked with snakes, donkeys, lions, bears, you name it. So when did being a grasshopper ever begin to change what was in God's heart? If they really stopped and thought about it, there were some pluses for being a grasshopper. And since that's what they had talked themselves into being, there's some pluses for being a grasshopper. Who likes grasshoppers? Yeah, not too many. Same here. You know, when I was growing up, my sister, who's a lovely woman, my sister told me that if the big behind legs of them ever dig into you, when they jump on you, you'll die. Well, you can imagine how I screamed blue murder when one got in on me in the garden. I was like, as I was off. And then it was around that same time, and she is a lovely person, she told me if I dug too deep in the garden, the devil would stick his pitchfork up into me and drag me down to hell. But somehow it didn't, it didn't you know, deter my enthusiasm for gardening. And I have dealt with more grasshoppers than you need to know. So here's a few little things. If they were grasshoppers, Here's a few little things to note about grasshoppers that would have been to their advantage still. Grasshopper droppings contribute to the nutrient turnover by returning nutrients as fertilizers for the plants. There are about 10,000 different species, such as the Russian thistle grasshopper, the white whiskered grasshopper, Brunus slant faced grasshopper, snakeweed grasshopper, red shanked grasshopper, to name a few. I bet you didn't know that. Don't go home today and say, I don't tell you anything. Small, listen to this, small and well camouflaged, it blends easily into its environment, not easily noticeable. If they had have been grasshoppers, it felt like it, the enemy would have had to battle to see them. Grasshoppers effectively exploit the resources of their habitat and at the same time, they're able to tolerate or evade the extremes of physical factors. If they felt they were grasshoppers, they wouldn't have easily been deterred by the enemy. They can walk, hop, and fly. If they felt they were grasshoppers, what a great way to scale the walls of the enemy's cities. Their characteristic rapid jumping and flying response helped them escape numerous enemies. Well, if they felt they were grasshoppers, humans can't fly. But what a great way to escape if they have needed to. Amazingly, grasshoppers are able to communicate visually and acoustically among themselves. They produce sounds with their hind legs and flash visual messages with their wings and receive them with their compound eyes. Who would have thought so much was going on with the grasshoppers? But if they felt that they were grasshoppers, talk about a secret code of communication. The enemy would never have known what they were saying. And the final one, and it's a biggie, this alone would have secured victory for them. They can travel in very large numbers and cause serious crop damage and loss of plants in pastures. So if they really thought they were grasshoppers, once you take out the food supply for the enemy, they'll starve to death. The reality was they weren't grasshoppers. And even if they were, they had so much going for them to overtake the land. But the important thing in this instance is in this incident is that God had given them a directive and had and he had it all worked out. And since when did it become about their human ability? When on your Mondays does it come about your human ability? When you've got, if you have a relationship with God, the Almighty Godhead is all sitting residing in you. When did it come to be just about you? If God is solely relying on human ability, the mission is over and disaster has, start before, has happened before it even got started. God probably, didn't even need, God probably didn't even need to lift his little finger to pull this baby off when they had to go. Psalm 33 verses 10 to 11 says, And with a breath he can scatter the plans of the nations who oppose him, but his own plan stands forever. 
Romans 8 verse 31, if God is for us, who can ever be against us? When you are presented with a slim window of opportunity, give God a go. It's not all about you. It's all about him and what he can do through you if you will work with him. You are made for Mondays. Philippians 2 verse 13 says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. We partner with God on Mondays. There's so much difference it can make to our world. I'm going to invite Cherie Lamont to come up and just tell you a bit of her story when she stopped listening to humans and listened to God. Um, In January last year, while I was working in retail for a cosmetic company, I had a strong desire to work in an office. I was surprised because I never thought I could work um, at the office environment. More than that, I had no interest in working with computers whatsoever. No way. So this is how I knew that it was God who gave me the desire. So um, I started to look for an opportunity to work in an office, and I found one very soon. In this new job, I find myself struggling with feelings of intimidation and inadequacy. And I was constantly um, second-guessing myself. I was so worried that I would make a mistake. One day, I did make a mistake with a simple task, and my boss looked very disappointed in me. I felt so small and defenseless. I couldn't understand why God would lead me here and let me fail. So I was asked, Lord, Lord, what is this? Why is this happening to me? In that moment, I had a flashback to when I was a little girl um, in my primary school. I brought uh, my math test home from school and my mom saw my grade and she looked very disappointed and said, There's no hope for you. I'm going to give up on you. And she said this kind of thing every time I brought my grades home. So it got to the point where I would cry whenever I received my school report and I was afraid to go home. So when the Lord revealed this memory to me, I heard him saying, the reason I brought you here is to deliver you from your spiritual bondage. You will be okay. I will walk this journey with you. I cried for the next three days. I've never felt so vulnerable in my life. And I felt like there was no hope for me. I thought to myself, how, how could I be this bad? And I felt like my world just collapsed in that moment. I came to church that weekend while Pastor Sean was preaching I knew the Holy Spirit wanted to set me free. I was a complete mess that morning. When we had a ministry time, I came out to receive prayer. And our lovely Pastor Linda, she prayed for me, and she broke off the words of death that had been spoken over me and prayed a blessing for me. Then a couple of friends, also they came and they prayed for me after the service. I'm so grateful for them. Now, I had to choose whether I choose to keep going or to give up. So I I chose to trust God and confront this fear. By the following week, I was a different person. I had a different attitude and mindset about work and myself. So I was ready to take on the challenge. I wish I could tell you that it was all good from then on. But it wasn't. I ended up leaving the job. But the good news was I left the job a different person. So I took a step of faith and decided to study. It was a big deal for me because I have a history of giving up on courses and avoiding exams. But this time I knew I was free from what was holding me back. So months of study and hard work. Last week, 
I passed my second technical exam. And now I have my first certification in information technology. I have overcome the fear of exams and I love studying now. If I didn't follow God's leading into this unfamiliar territory, I wouldn't be here to share my testimony with you. Proverbs chapter 3 tells me to trust in the Lord with all my heart, lean not on my own understanding. God has never failed me, and I can now say with confidence, I can do all things Christ who strengthens me. Thank you. Thanks, Sheree. Well, well, it won't be a moment. I've got a new iPad and I can't get it to get me up. Oh, here we are. Here we are. Right, great. So, you know, everything that we've shared about, I'd like to ask you, what are the giants? What are the giants in your workplace that's really all in your head? Because when you've got the almighty God living in you, there's no giants. They're all vulnerable. It's just psychological warfare of the enemy because he is defeated and you have a great God inside of you. You have a great God inside of you. Everything I've spoken about today boils down to relationship and a relationship with God. He has so much he wants to do in and through you and he wants you to be able to work with him so that he, he's got this life that he's always imagined for you that would be free and fulfilled. He wants to you to enjoy your work. He wants to enjoy you to enjoy the opportunities and the excitement of God. What do you want to do through me today at my work? I love this verse. I've always loved it. Ephesians 3, verses 20 to 21. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or imagine. So it's everything God can do is more than a human can imagine. According to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Jesus to all generations forever and ever. If the worship team could come, thanks. While the world's been busy saying God doesn't exist or I don't really need him, I don't want anything to do with him, he couldn't prove any more how much he longs to be in relationship with us, with you and with me. With a world rebelling against God and it all culminating in a gross lot of sin, he made a very costly decision to help put mankind back on the map with him in relationship so we could be in relationship with him. He gave us his only son, Jesus, to become human, to live a love among mankind, to show the father heart of our father and what he was like and what he could be in our relationship. And Jesus' love for us took him all the way to the cross to pay the ultimate price for the sins of mankind, for you and for me, once and for all, all. Never again He would he have to do it. And this enabled you and me to come into relationship with a God who freely, freely, by just sincerely asking God to forgive you, He will forgive you. And you can ask him into your life. You, we don't need to die on a cross. Jesus did that for you. Jesus did that for you. We don't need to do it. The good news is that on the third day, our Heavenly Father raised Jesus from the dead. And he is alive and you can have a relationship with a living Saviour. And this morning, I would like to invite everyone to repeat a prayer after me that's going to be up on the screen. And if you would like to ask Jesus to come into your life, or perhaps you've had a relationship with Him over the years and whatever's happened, circumstances, you've let that relationship slip and you're not close to Jesus anymore. You're not close to Him. You don't have that relationship. And perhaps today you say, I need, Linda, I need to recommit myself to that relationship with God. So if you wanted this morning, ask Jesus to come into your life or you want to reconnect and recommit in that relationship, I'd ask you to pray this prayer along with the rest of us, just repeating after me. Don't please, don't let this opportunity pass you by. You've got a God that loves you so much. Dear Lord Jesus, I am sorry that I have excluded you from my life. 
I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. Today, Jesus, I have decided to follow you as my Lord and Saviour. Amen. And while every eye is closed for privacy, if you're watching online today and you prayed that prayer today, can I just ask you to say, text yes and your name to the number on the screen and one of our team would love to help you in your next step in your relationship with God. It's gonna be so worth it. And you can lift, just keep your eyes closed this morning. And I'm not here to embarrass anybody, but if you are here today in our auditorium, we could have the lights up a little bit more, please. And if you pray that prayer for the first time or you're recommitting your life to God, could you just raise your hand high enough for me to see this morning? We don't want to miss any opportunity for you to come in a relationship. Just looking over the auditorium, anyone this morning, you say, hey, yeah, I pray that prayer, Linda. I want to ask him into my life. I want to recommit my life. Okay, you can open your eyes. You know, if you weren't ready to make that decision today, that's honestly, that's totally okay. Just don't give up searching for God because he longs to be in relationship with you. As I conclude this morning, can I encourage you today? Don't look to yourself and your ability. Look at the great God inside of you and the great ability He's got. Just give God a go. You were and are, sorry, you are made for Mondays and every other day of the week. Let God work through you and touch people's lives. As we continue in worship this morning, we'd love to be able to pray for you. If you need prayer to just step out in boldness and that and be more focused on partnering with God and letting Him work through you, then our team down the front while we're worshipping would love to pray for you. And perhaps you want prayer for something else, for healing, for breakthrough, for a difficult situation, for relationships, whatever. Our team are down here and they want to be able to pray for you. So let's stand this morning and let's worship our mighty God. But if you would like prayer, you are most welcome to come. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We know that we can trust in you and that you will come to our rescue. We continue to claim everything that we desire and we trust you for everything, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship your name. Thank you, Jesus.
doing this family is that we put in our prayer requests and we have a team that prays for them during the week. Um, there are these cards you can fill out at the back and what we do on Sundays we share them so that we can stand together in prayer. So as an encouragement I'd like to share with you um, a praise report first. So this praise report goes, I'm thank, uh, says I'm thanking God for after praying for my daughter to be set free of drug addiction which covered many years I recently found out that she had stopped taking this week I recently found out she stopped taking all drugs a couple of years ago so this goes to show that God truly answers prayer even when we don't know the outcome or the answer to those prayers 
Isn't God glorious to set people free of their bondages and addiction? That's our God. Thank you, Lord. So we have a few prayer requests um, that have been listed through um, online and through the cards, and I'd like to share them with you. So we have people who are moving, uh, either moving to Canberra or moving to new accommodation. We, um, they've asked that we pray for um, smooth transition. Um, we're also praying for um, healing for a couple of people who have presented in emergency department um, this week, and Pastor Sean will be in that group too for healing. And we're also praying for um, the situation uh, that's happened where the lives were lost, um, as shared from Mark this morning in the shopping centre. Um, and we're also praying for our um, mission workers for safety, um, for healing and wholeness. So as I lead you in prayer, please close your eyes and pray with me as uh, we pray for these things. Dear Lord Jesus, we stand before you. We know that you hear our prayer and it's our privilege to pray for our brothers and sisters. Lord, we just thank you that you answer our prayer and you come through. And Lord, we pray for the people who are currently moving, that you will make a way for them to find accommodation and for their family to transition smoothly. And Lord, we pray for um, people who are um, looking for work breakthroughs that even as Cherie testified, Lord, that you'll provide a work breakthrough for them. And Lord, we pray for people who have either been in hospital or presented to emergency department, Lord, that you will bring their healing swiftly and rapidly. Lord, that you are Jehovah Rapha, Lord, our healer, and we can trust you in that, Lord. And Lord, we pray for our field workers for health, healing, and wholeness, that you'll protect them, that you'll watch over them, and that you'll keep them safe as they continue to do the work of the ministry. And we just thank you for that, Lord. And for the situation, for those deaths um, that are so sad, we pray you come around those families uh, from that shopping center disaster. And Lord, you just come around those families, you comfort them, and Lord, you, that you provide them uh, peace in this time of situation of stress, Lord, and that your presence will be surround, will surround them. I thank you that you hear our, all our prayers and that you love us so very much. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now I have the privilege um, to pray a blessing over you uh, for your coming week and for your families. And I just have a quick short blessing, that, but it's very impacting. So if you're comfortable, um, even online, if you want to reach out your hands to receive this blessing, then we trust that, that God can give this exchange. And so we pray that now unto Him who's able to keep you in every situation, the Lord God of heaven will guard our hearts and minds through all that we have this week, that the God of heaven will support us and make a way for us in every situation, and that you will be with us through all things. We pray this blessing of the presence of God over you and all your families right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to thank you for being part of our service today. It's been, it's been wonderful to share and celebrate and worship together. Um, at this, now that we're at the end of the service, we just encourage you to uh, come along and meet us up in the cafe if you're in the auditorium. Um, if you're new here today or you would need to visit our Next Step stand, that's just at the back um, on the left on our way out. And Lord, and we just thank you that... Um, as we share together and we share our journey of life together, as we have a relationship with other, each other, we can really show the goodness, the grace and mercy of God. So just bless you and um, be welcome to our cafe after this service. Thank you. Have a wonderful week. Bye.